Welcome to The Bill Walton Show, featuring conversations with leaders, entrepreneurs, artists and thinkers. Fresh perspectives on money, culture, politics and human flourishing. Interesting people, interesting things. Welcome to The Bill Walton Show. I'm Bill Walton. The Olympics. Uh, this year seems to be particularly fraught with uh, pros and cons as we as we think about what's going to be happening in Co Tokyo the next couple of weeks. Watching the Olympics since 1960, and I've loved them over the years. And of course, there's always been political and other things swirling around them. You know, the boycott of Jimmy Carter, the terrible thing that happened in Munich in 1972. Uh, but we got kicking around this thing during the uh, during a recent conference call with the Bill Walton team, and so I've asked a few of us to come on to uh, talk about what what's at stake here. Uh, Brian McNichol, Brian McNichol, Greg Columbus, and uh, Frank Wasiter, welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brian. What do you think? Well, I, I think it's going to be interesting. I, I, I'm wondering what they're going to do about COVID protocols. I think that's going to be the big story out of it. Is you know, you've already got a U.S. gymnast. Uh, she was an alternate. She wasn't one of the six, um, you know, actual members of the team who's contracted COVID. And uh, they think the other alternate, another alternate may also have it. So, you know, we're, uh, that leaves you with just your six. So nobody better get hurt or anything or we're, we're in trouble in gymnastics. Uh, it actually starts today, softball and women's soccer and some other stuff. Um, but, you know, look for political displays, look for American athletes to kneel and turn away from the flag and all this kind of stuff. And um, I don't think it's going to be real popular. I think that, like, the nation has kind of voted on this and, uh, you know, we don't like it. It's like you're over there representing us. You know, if you can't do that in good conscience, then you should give your slot to someone else. But if you're over there with USA on, you need to act like you're a proud American. So as I understand it, the only fans there will be Japanese. Correct. And Very few fans. Most things are not even allowed. In fact, there's a there's a story in Washington Post this morning. There's a Paralympic. You know, they have they always have the Paralympics in the same place they had the Olympics as soon as they're over. And this girl is deaf and becoming blind. Uh, she has a condition that you're deaf at birth and then your sight goes away. And she needs a personal assistant to compete. She's a swimmer. And they told her the personal assistant cannot come. So she's like, well, I, I can't go. I, I got to have her. So, you know, it's already going to be, you know, and these are young, healthy people who are in no real meaningful danger of being seriously sick from COVID. Well, you know what I think about this whole COVID thing. I think we need to treat the vulnerable and leave the ones that are not likely to have any problems alone. And if you think about a, a, a poster child for a, a healthy person that's likely to be unaffected by the COVID virus, it's an Olympic athlete. Right. That's right. <laughs> Young Greg, adult who, who, who's who, in good health and knows, knows yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Greg? Yeah, I think I think Brian's right that this is going to be the headline because we're going to see famous people uh, withdrawing. We already are. We saw Coco Goff, the tennis player, say that uh, she's contracted COVID, she's not going. And and the thing that uh, is perhaps going to be bigger than the Olympics on this is people still being pulled away, quarantined, even though they've been vaccinated, even though their symptoms are very mild. And so are we essentially going to get to the point where we never really get past this because uh, the slightest sniffle, you might test positive, but if, if you're vaccinated or if you're young and healthy, like you just said, uh, the effects are likely to be pretty mild. And so are we going to just go in this continuous cycle uh, where people who are mildly sick end up uh, throwing a lot of things into chaos? In this case, the Olympic Games. I mean, what if it's Simone Biles? What if it's a leading member of the uh, basketball team or a, a star track athlete or swimmer? Uh, it's it's going to be very interesting to watch the reaction if somebody who's uh, very likely to be in a, a position to win a gold medal or, or medal at all uh, to to get kicked out because they barely feel sick. And uh, I think that the, the blowback to that could be could be huge. The one thing I do give the, 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 the IOC credit for is actually making sure that this is going to happen. A lot of people over there don't even want it to happen at all. Uh, it's going to be different with no crowds. And I think they said no hugging 
uh, even if you win. So it's going to be a silent Olympics in a lot of ways. But uh, but the COVID thing and and elite athletes getting robbed of their chance to 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 achieve their dream at the last moment could be a very big story here. Well, we're all doing it for the Olympians, or at least that you know I think we all feel that they've put their life into this and they deserve their shot. But my guess is this is going to be an Olympics with an asterisk attached to it because there are going to be so many people who are competing in an event where maybe the, the the world champion is out with COVID or maybe the whole a whole team is taken out. I mean, what happens if the U.S. basketball team decides it's got a quarantine? I, I, and that's all that's all in, a, in the possible realm. So somebody Frank, else would win the bronze medal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've had a rough preseason, but they've also had a couple of players – step away from the team for coming so yeah. well, have they yeah. i think they've already lost three times haven't they i mean this at is at least twice, they've lost the twice and, they, and they've lost bradley beal who was you know one of their top scorers and yeah. the washington wizards player and one more i believe the, kevin love is not yeah, is not gonna be there either yeah, yeah. hey frank yeah, it's uh you know i think you, what you got there is just is a powder keg of a situation um like the japanese populace they, they are not you know, they are not happy with anything like uh, with anything going on with the Olympics. Like, in fact, uh, it's so bad over there that, uh, com- you know, the major companies like Toyota and everything like that have pulled all of their advertising away from local Japanese TV because they don't want to be associated with it because, you know, this is a situation where there's no playbook. You know, it's not like, you know, there's like, oh, like, like the reference man will say, OK, well, what do I do in this situation, you know, amidst, you know, national pandemic and everything like that with, you know, views and uh, policies as extreme as they can possibly get. Uh, So on the one hand, you've got like, there's no good out for this. Uh, Like the the local Japanese business owners are disappointed because they were, you know, kind of expecting a lift from uh, the tourism that the Olympics usually brings. That's not going to happen. They're, uh, they're kind of resentful uh, for the people that are in attendance is, is, is what I was, you know, reading across uh, reports from over there because fundamentally Japan's in its like fourth like quarantine lockdown stage. And because of that, um, there's a lot of restrictions on, on their citizens' freedoms uh, because they, they've got a real no nonsense, you know, form of government when it comes to these things. They just, you know, they, they, they take the extreme action. But, 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 uh, okay, so Japan has draconian lockdown measures. Uh, they're an island country. They think they're going to be like Australia and New Zealand and lock, you know, they got an ocean around them. They can lock themselves down. But that hasn't proven to be effective. Right. And so we've got yeah. the same old, I mean, this, this Olympic argument is layered over this whole argument about what's the appropriate way to, uh, to deal with the, with the virus. And the, I think the jury's in a year and a half ago, we didn't know, but right now you can look at the statistics for say a state like California versus a state like Florida, where they didn't have any of this. And, the, and actually Florida got better results with, uh, with old people. And well, Japan's uh, filled with old people. So yeah. uh, on a scale of one to 10, is Japan like a nine on, in terms of lockdown severity? Yeah. And they're, I would say that. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're uh, they, they don't, they just, they say, Hey, you know, these are the things you can and can't do. And um, you know, so there's, there's resentment between that and like the, the, the people that are allowed to travel and attend have significantly more freedoms right. in what they're able to do than the local populace. Oh, so if you can get into the country, you're part of the privileged few. You can move about freely, but everybody else is locked down. Move about freely within, like, basically the yeah. zones that they set up that you can do that. Yes, zones, but... I, I think I think Japanese companies have about three billion dollars in sponsorship money they've already put into this thing, and I think they're pretty cranky. Yeah, yeah, like they're pulling a lot. Like Toyota pulled all their stuff. They said they, they said they're not associate. They don't want to associate it with it, with it whatsoever because. Basically, they're looking at it and saying, no matter what happens here, this is probably going to be the most unpopular Olympics ever. And there's just no way that everybody comes out saying this was this was great. It's very little of the pleasure and all of the pain and more that goes into putting on, putting on the Olympics. <clears throat> well, um, this could be a short show. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you also have the... Uh, you know, the fact of the Olympic Village, we've already seen some positive tests come out of the village and you've got these people uh, uh, in fairly close quarters. Uh, yeah. And for those who don't follow the Olympics, in addition to going to your event, 
Now, let's just say there are other events that go on in the Olympic Village throughout the uh, the rest of the two weeks where people are in fairly close contact with one another uh, with these elite athletes. And um, it's, 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 uh, athleticism on display there. They are they are they are discouraging that type of activity. I think the beds are made of cardboard this year. Yeah. If I read that well, the, correctly. The, the, the Olympic cardboard, the Olympic yeah. Village is is just sounds like the best party place on the planet during during the games. I mean, I. Obviously, I've never been there, but it, 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 isn't that just one of the real, aside from competing in your event, being part of the whole Olympic Village and the whole experience and hanging out with other athletes, isn't that a big part of the uh, experience? The mingling, yes. Yeah, mingling. And, and you know, it's like the- We got all these euphemisms. Okay, we're, we're gonna mingle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that you know, like the US basketball team, I remember the dream team back in 92, um, you, you guys might not have been, old enough to watch tv i, oh, I, I remember was, that uh, i remember <laughs> the dream team absolutely uh but but you know they were huge celebrities when they as they moved around the olympic village right they were they were heavily guarded and they had their own hotel off out of the village because you know they would have gotten crushed in the village but they they made themselves available and they were it was a huge cultural exchange you know and so forth and i always thought you know that was a good like they were ambassadors for america in a good way and you're not going to have any of that this year. You're not going to have, you know, part of what the Olympics is designed to do is sort of bring us together. You know, everybody loves a trophy, you know, but you're not going to get that this year. You're going to get, it's going to be very sterile and, you know, the award ceremony is very quick and dry and unemotional. And, you know, a lot of what we watch the Olympics to see has been peeled away in the name of, you know, preventing a disease that almost everyone recovers from. Well, at the risk of stating the obvious, spectator sports need spectators. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. And, 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 and I, I think I think the athlete, I think the athletes feed off of the crowd. Oh, oh definitely. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, now, but the, the thing about it is, a lot of these sports, this is the only way you will ever get spectators. You know, I mean, I you know, we don't really watch diving. We don't really want you know. I mean, the big the big tournament you may watch, right? But diving on TV, you know, I'm I'm shifting right through that most people are right well i watch well, it i mean isn't it funny every four years i watch olympic diving and i have <laughs> no show. idea what they're talking about i have no know, idea what to learn by the end of it it's like yeah i know what a triple tuck is you know and that's a nine you relearn nine. it every four years that's right <laughs> yeah, after, after an hour or two, after an hour or two you get mad at the judges because you think you know better than they do about right. yeah, yeah. Flip on the vault <laughs> yeah. dive yeah <laughs> Well, curling, I, I guess that's winter, but uh, yeah, there are lots of arcane. Lots Same thing, of... figure skating judges. Yeah, no yeah. matter what. Yeah. So yeah. I, have any of the individual, have any of the events been canceled? I mean, are, is everybody all I think the, any of the events have been canceled? I don't think any of the events have been canceled. Some have been moved, like they're doing funky things with the marathon because, you know, Tokyo is, a, is like New Orleans in the summer. And so it's kind of hard to run a marathon in that kind of weather. So they're well, going to kick it out. I think they went up somewhere in the mountains and they're doing yeah. it, you know, separate from the rest of the games. Frank. Gotcha. Well, you know, I think I was going to build on, you know, Brian's point. If we, uh, you know, if you look at the original purpose of the Olympics, I'm talking not even like, you know, when we brought it back, but like the Greek originals, they said, you know, we're going to compete athletically amongst the city states, uh, you know, the Athens, Sparta and everything like that um, as, a, as a replacement to war so that we don't have to, um, you know, we, rather than settling disputes and things like that uh, through sending people out to go to fight battles, we're just going to hold these games and it's going to do two things. One, it's going to allow like us to kind of like settle disputes. And number two, you know, as people, the less that you're able to interact with other people from different, you know, tribes, cities, countries, et cetera, like that, it's very easy to go and say, well, you know, they're, they're messed up or, you know, they're, they're evil. They're, you know, not on uh, the well, same uh, level, but when uh, you can meet like that, 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 that makes relationships better. Like it just, well, I, it opens up the, right, the I, I, I'm, I got a, I'm not quite sure that's correct. I think there are two, <laughs> there are two different Olympic spirits going on here. There's the Olympic spirit in 1896 when they re, started the game or 1892 whatever the date was they did it the brit that put that together said a lot of the same things you're saying but when the greeks did it it was part of the <laughs> religious part of religious ceremony and they didn't have any prizes for second 
I mean, you came in first and that was it. And they had no women, they competed naked. Um, you know, they didn't even allow women as spectators. And one of the interesting things about that, there's a story where one of the runners that was the favorite somehow fell and his trainer leapt over a, um, uh, a, um, a barrier of some sort to find out what was going on. And maybe this is before they ended up with no clothes and the trainer's gown flew up and he discovered it was not a man. <laughs> it was his mother. <laughs> And it's like at that point they they banned the whole thing. So it was I, I, the Greeks were had a different different view. But I think you're right about the 1896 spirit, and that is sort of the spirit today. We're supposed to be these countries coming together to celebrate our common humanity and to celebrate uh, excellence in sports and camaraderie and all that. But if you believe that's the agenda, I think you guys have made the case that isn't what's going to happen this year. Well, think about you it know, for those of us who are old enough to remember, Bill, the, the Cold War. I mean, part of it was cheering for Americans the whole time. And the other thing was cheering for the people from the communist countries to, to wipe out and fall under butts and <laughs> skating and and, don't you, uh, and find don't a you way remember to make hate, sure hating the, the Russian hating the Russian hockey team. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, and those East, that, German, uh, Alexi, those East German Alexi, women Alexi spreaders. Lee, the guy, the power <laughs> lifter who always beat us. What was his name? Alexei. Yeah. Vastly, yes. It, yeah. I remember who you're talking about. I just can't say his name. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm but, you know, the a... miracle on ice is why these are important. You know, they, yeah, they mean right. something. They're exactly. important traditions. That was a major, you know? major geopolitical but, victory. But I'm going to I'm going to change my view. I sort of thought maybe these shouldn't happen. But now I'm hearing us talk about and, and I'm exhibit a getting absorbed in all these sports and rooting for these outcomes. We didn't even know what the rules were, you know, an hour ago. <laughs> Uh, and arguing with the ref, I think we're going to have fun watching it. I think yeah. it'll be problematic, and uh, there's a lots of dire stuff. But I think let the games begin. I think our friends on the other side of the aisle are going to make arses of themselves over this, right? I think they're. What do you, you know, mean? Who 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 on the other side of the aisle? What do you I, mean? The, you know, the, the left, the woke, oh. right? Oh, that aisle. It's, there's it's like <laughs> one big demonstration of of patriotism. You know, and the reason we're for these people is because they're from our country, right? I mean, yeah. we don't know them from Adam, right? In most of these sports, we don't know who the people are until it until the start. But but hey, if you got that USA on, you're ours. Okay, now that's an attitude we've all had our entire lives. You know, right. uh, I remember I was in Canada one time, and the U.S. was playing Canada in women's basketball, and they're all all the Canadians are are charged are cheering for Canada. And like that feeling of being the outsider, I mean, it was, it was incredible. It was, you know, something I've never forgotten. And, um, you know, so, you know, it's about your country. So they're not for, you know, glorifying our country, the left. They're for running it down. That's what, you know, critical theory. It's not just critical race theory. It's criticism of all of the institutions. It's, it's mocking all the institutions. And well, so know this is an institution and like, how can they, resist mocking it well i know there's one female hammer thrower i'm not going to be rooting for well she finished third in the u.s trials and speaking of sports that we don't watch until we get to the olympics <laughs> <laughs> hammer throwing would definitely what, be one of them does the but, hammer even look like i mean is it a is it like a it's, it's not a it's not a hammer with a nail removed. Like a little piece of iron basically okay, <laughs> okay. anyway greg what you're saying yeah, I was going to say there will undoubtedly be political issues. I, I, I'm guessing someone, if it's not her, it'll be someone else. Uh, will will do something on the podium or or with the flag, and that'll be a major discussion, just like it was at the Olympic trials, for someone very few people had heard of in a sport nobody follows. So, uh, and so we're going to have a controversy probably if the transgender New Zealand weightlifter wins a medal. Um, you know, what is that fair? The left will obviously celebrate that if that happens. So. Uh, there will be political elements of this for well, sure. It, it, we're all being ES. Sports has, has been ESPN for the last decade, and everything is political, and everything mm -hmm. is race, and everything is you know. And um, there was a funny, if not, I, I thought it was pretty funny. There's an article in the Economist criticizing the Italian soccer team because they didn't have enough people of color on the Italian soccer team. And it turns out the Italian soccer team has 
I think one black guy from North Africa, one of the countries, maybe, I don't know which one, um, but that's not the point. The point is, if you look at the racial makeup, the demographics of Africa or uh, Italy, it's about 96% uh, Italian. I mean, it doesn't have a large ethnic community at all. So if you just take a cross section of Italy, you'd end up with a soccer team that looks exactly like the soccer team they have without kind of finding an affirmative action way to re-engineer it. And so even with something like that, the, the Italian soccer team, uh, they're somehow racist because they don't have enough black people on it. Um, I mean, I, 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 you know, if I'm black, I'm beginning to get deeply offended that you got to give me extra, extra points to get me into the game. I think, I think as athletes, they could certainly, they've certainly proved themselves. I don't know. Thoughts. And if you think Italy is choosing that team on any criteria other than merit, you are nuts. You know, that is not being chosen. They chosen want the best soccer racial. players. Huh? Yeah. I mean, they want to win. They're the, they're the best in the world. They're in the, you know, the best two or three in the world in world cup, all these big soccer competitions, you know, they're not there to like, pick all the white guys they're there to win the tournament yeah the only thing that matters you know especially when you're putting a highly competitive team together is who is the best in the country that i can put on this team that gives us the highest probability of success and no other factor matters like yeah. it just they doesn't don't care about anything else i that, promise you that that's they, the beauty of sports green people in there green people would help them win Sports is the ultimate meritocracy. Yeah. You can either get the job done, you're better than the guy you're playing against, or you're not. Uh, there's very few ways you can uh, try to uh, fix the playing field with that. Uh, talent rises to the top, uh, determination, uh, the character traits that, that go into champions. And that's why people love sports. It's when you start to politicize it, just like uh, we've seen with the NBA and Major League Baseball with the All-Star Game this year, and the NFL is, is doing a lot of it too. I think the NBA is probably the worst, but... Um, it's happening more and more and people who just want to appreciate the competitiveness, the drive for excellence and, and just get away from the politics of it. They're having a hard time doing it now. WNBA is the worst. That is the okay. most politicized sports. <laughs> WNBA is, is women's basketball. Yeah. Yeah. I keep trying to watch it. It's just, I don't know. It, it's, I want to watch it, but I can't be a fan. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can't be a fan. Cause it's like, you, you know, you're, you're, you're all these other messaging first. I, I tune in for basketball. I'm a basketball coach. I, I'll watch basketball all day long, but you know, I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I don't care about all that other stuff. I don't want that in my, in my face. Okay. Predictions as this thing gets covered by NBC, what, what percentage of this is going to be about sports and what's percent of it's going to be about social agendas and everything else? Well, you know, they're, I think they're going to have like the, the real going, of course, of the events, but, you know, nothing sells like a good controversy. So if there's any opportunity to spin up controversy, it's going to get the majority of the, uh, the exposure. It's just the bottom line because that, that, that gets advertising dollars that keeps NBC going. Yeah, that's that's part of it. And uh, I also if you watch the Olympics anytime in the last few decades, they love the human interest story. Anybody with a chance to meddle, uh, they will put together a story that will uh, tell some challenge or obstacle they've overcome. And people love to identify with those people and root. And so hopefully most of it will be about outstanding performances. You know, Simone Biles being far and away the greatest that, that we've ever seen and uh, excellence in the pool and on the track, just speed and and strength and, and whatever else the event is. Uh, it's inevitable that we're going to see the other stuff, but hopefully I'm still slightly optimistic that uh, athletic excellence will still end up being the, uh, the, the, the headline of the day, assuming the athletes don't test positive for COVID. Well, you remember what happened with Ryan Lochte last time. And then, uh, you know, that was like the majority of the coverage. He got exonerated by the way, but nobody heard about that. I forget Brian Lochte. What did he do? What was his uh, sin against humanity? He was a, you, you know, they, they were lying about being mugged. Oh, or allegedly, oh, I don't oh, even know what how that, yeah. how that he, he worked out. He engaged in some behavior uh, could, under the influence of alcohol that he tried yeah. to explain away in some uh, curiosity. Okay. Oh, I remember that. The swimmer. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we could always bring back Tanya Harding with her boyfriend and the ball peen hammer. Uh, <laughs> right. Anyway, there's going to be some drama. This is going to be fun. So why don't we, I guess, why don't we, uh, why don't we check back in uh, after this is all happening for maybe a little post-mortem to see, uh, to see what comes true. I hope it's about the sports. It sounds like you guys do too. 
I hope so. You never know. <laughs> okay. Right. Frank, Greg, Brian, thanks. And uh, fun to talk about. And uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon. You've been watching the Bill Walton show and we've been uh, on, on talking with the Bill Walton team about the Olympics and uh, various predictions about what might happen. We're all looking forward to it. Hope you do too. And hope you all join us again for our next show, which you can find at the BillWaltonShow.com. Thanks. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Want more? Click the subscribe button or head over to thebillwaltonshow.com to choose from over 100 episodes. You can also learn more about our guest on our Interesting People page. And send us your comments. We read every one and your thoughts help us guide the show. If it's easier for you to listen, check out our podcast page and subscribe there. In return, we'll keep you informed about what's true, what's right, and what's next. Thanks for joining.